Happy Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. We're back, we're back, we're back. Hey guys, how is everybody this Sunday evening? Thank you for coming in to be here with me and Schreiker. Your best friend T is with Edna. They decided to play bocce balls today and go to the CVS pharmacy to pick up some much needed prescriptions and um, then they were going to go and maybe do some water. No, I don't know. She just, <laughs> she wasn't with Edna today. She was with, um, she told me the name of the woman that she was with. I can't remember. Maybe if she comes in and visits, she'll write the name in the chat. Was it a um, new one? Yeah, it's, it's somebody new, but she doesn't live in her community. Yeah, but it's, you know, she's from the Bronx. She's from the Bronx. Of course, everybody around her is from New York. They're all from up there, like down here. They all moved down the, down here. They're all coming. Like, like years ago with the... Um, There's going to be more of them too. The loaded wagons. They loaded up their wagons and moved south. That's what they're doing. <laughs> Hi, Glenn. The swamp is in the house. Hello, hello, Mr. Captain. Captain Spaldings. Good evening, sir. Hi, D's Collections. Hello, sweetheart. Good to see you. Mary Ness. Hello. Hi, honey. Christine Rose. I'm so glad you're taking a break from studying. I hope you can hang out for a little while. Thank you for being here. Mr. Frank Perez. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy Bauer. Hello, Kathy. It's so good to see you. Hey, Shell. Welcome in. Welcome in. Saxton. Saxton, thank you so much for uh, helping us yesterday during um, Schreiker's absence. He likes to go to uh, the auction on, on Saturday. Do I need to be worried? No, <laughs> you do not need to be worried. But it was it was nice to have it was nice to have Saxton. I mean, it's always nice to have you, but it was nice to have Saxton. You know, and she got to show a few things, so that was good. I think she was happy with that. And I don't know what she showed because I I walked away from the camera when she was showing because I had Dolores here, so I was working in the background in between me and T and her showing. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you. June, hello, sweetheart. Hello, hello, hello. Nance P, hi, honey. Hello, Nance. <clears throat> yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that, you guys. Please counteract those thumbs down. There's a, there's a group of people that are uh, determined to just give me lots of thumbs down. Um, it's been told to me, and unfortunately... Um, I know who they are, and we just won't pay any attention to them. We just won't pay any attention to them. Hey, D. Hewitt. Hi, Lindsay Ann. Hello, sweetheart. Thank you for being here. James Cisco. Hope everyone had a great... Hope everyone had a great... Hope everyone had a great, you guys. Fill in the blanks with that. We did, James. Thank you. <laughs> huh? I said we did. Thank you. I know. Hope everyone had a great dinner, weekend, last 24 hours, nap. I had a nap today. It was great. Hi, Heather. Hi, sweetheart. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Mr. Kyle Elliott. What are those emojis you put in there? Beer. Beer? What, where's my goals? Kyle, where's my goals, goals, goals? Hey, Christine. Dora. Hello, Dora. Look at you guys all coming in. Hi, Pam. Thank you so much for coming in. Just me. Hello, sweetheart. Maddie. Hello, Madeline. Pat D's. Pat D's had a really successful uh, live last night with Kimberly and Mr. Chris the Goose. Goose. That yeah, was, it was awesome. A lot of fun. There's Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. 
Beetle Gal, hello, hello. Thanks for coming in. Harley Kitten, hi, honey. I love, I love live auctions. They are fun. Thank you, Captain. Hi, Mary. Good evening, Elaine, Elaine. I hope you had a wonderful, sunny, beautiful day. Yes, today it was beautiful, right, Elaine? No rain today. It was hot and gorgeous and sunny. I feel kind of bad because Megan wanted to come this weekend from Texas and she looked at the forecast and it said rain. And did we even get a stitch of rain? Not one stitch of rain. So I feel bad because she was like all ready to like book her trip. And I said, check the weather before you do that and make sure it's not going to be a rainy weekend. Like the last time she came for the weekend, but she found airfare from Texas to um, PBI, which is Palm Beach International, which is only 20 minutes down the road, round trip for $150. So she wanted to book it so bad and come back to the cottage, but she wanted it to be nice out. Yeah, June says, anybody that didn't watch Pat D's, you guys go over and watch Pat D's. It was a, it was a nice live. It was a nice live. You guys will enjoy it. Hi, Ruth Bond. Karen's at the beach. Welcome back. Good to see you. Hi, Jenny. What did she say, Port T? I'll invite you, I'll invite you and not my channel. What does that mean? I don't know what June means by that. Port T. Port T is enjoying probably an amazing dinner right now with her husband and a cocktail sitting on her porch with the rocking chairs waving to her neighbors as they walk by with their little dogs. Wow, it was in you. Did you hear the Harley? I hear too many of them around here. I just, it just went by the Harley that I always talk about. It sounded like it may have been a couple. It was really loud. Mr. Taranzio, welcome in. Thank well, you for she's, coming. Uh, she's been invited now. But she won't come. I dare her to come. Schreiker, it's thundering by here. I'm heading up to Port St. Lucie this week. Donna and Schreiker, it's thundered by here. It's not thundering here. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful evening. Hey, Mimi. Hello, Denise. Welcome in. Welcome in. Church canoeing and beach day for my son. Loving it. Oh, Lane, that's awesome. I actually spent part of the day with Dolores packing up orders. Um, I only printed like five or six shipping labels, but all the orders are packed, measured, and they just need to be wrapped. They just got to, I just got to print out um, shipping um, labels for them. That's what we did today. We packed we just packed all the orders, but I didn't. Um, I didn't deduct from your gift certificates, and I didn't. I didn't do much billing. I did a little bit of billing, and now tomorrow I just got to print labels, which will be great. Dolores helped me a ton, so Dolores was here for part of the day, and then Angelina and I spent um, the second half of the day together, which was nice. And my husband, um, my husband and I, actually went out this morning. You know what, Elaine, Elaine's from the area, so she knows. Elaine, we went to the Pelican Cafe. You guys, you can Google it if you want. It's called the Pelican Cafe. It's in Lake Park, Florida. So it's this really beautiful, the woman is from, I think she's from Massachusetts. And the man is originally from Florida. They have like their bio. So I have lived here 16 years and I've never been to the Pelican Cafe and it has really great reputation. And um, so I, my husband and I went there for brunch this morning and it's the type of place that, so it's an old, old house on US one, which is like the major road that runs from the Florida Keys all the way up to Maine, US one. So it sits on US one in Lake Park in front of um, Kelsey Park, which is a park that sits right on the Intracoastal. Not really high rent district, like medium high. What's the matter? Christopher's here. Christopher Chatworth? Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, Christopher. So good to see you. 
So we went there. I just, I have to tell this story. So we went there and it's the type of place that has like, you know, white linen tablecloths and, you know, real napkins and the, you know, the staff, the, 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 the wait staff wears the long white aprons like down to their ankles. You know, it's really kind of like high end, really nice place. So I expected it to be a little bit pricey, but my husband and I went out to dinner for our anniversary. But prior to that, I haven't really, you know, we used to go out like maybe once every two weeks, but we haven't really been going out at all because I've just been working like a jackass. Anyways, I can't explain it any other way. It's the best term that comes to mind. And I love donkeys. So jackass just seems to be an appropriate term. Anyways, so I had an omelet with a Canadian bacon, smoked Canadian bacon and cheddar cheese. Um, I asked for a bagel with cream cheese and two tomato slices to go with my bagel. And the omelet, I'm not kidding you. The omelet was probably about this big. It was all of two eggs, maybe. Um, and then there was uh, red potatoes, small red potatoes cut in half. And I counted them. There was eight little red potatoes, roasted red, red potatoes and my bagel. And they charged me um, $2.50 for two slices of tomato that I asked with my bagel. So my breakfast, brunch, the entree was $18 plus $2.50 for my tomatoes. I didn't have coffee. I just had water because I got up really early this morning and I, I had had enough coffee. My husband had um, Eggs Benedict. So they came on English muffins. Um, two eggs. Um, he had the same potatoes as I had, and he said no to the toast or bagel or English muffin because he had the eggs Benedict. Um, and he had a cup of coffee at the tune of $2.50 for a cup of coffee. I was blown away, like completely blown away at the prices. I mean, honestly, you guys, can't you like get a dozen eggs for like $1.99? Oh yeah, decent ones too. Four eggs, four mm -hmm. eggs. That's all it was, was four eggs. I mean, I know the place is really beautiful and the atmosphere is really beautiful, but holy cow. Elaine, do you know what the place I'm talking about? The Pelican Cafe, it's, I mean, it's really beautiful. It's an old house, but I'll never go back ever. I mean, that's just, I don't know. Like I would expect to pay like that kind of money for dinner, but <coughs> excuse me, breakfast. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was just like, next time we'll go to the IHOP. <laughs> it was crazy. I just wanted to go someplace a little bit nicer and just have a nice treat. Hi, Kimberly. There's T. Hi, T. Are you talking with Edna, honey? Are you with Edna? <laughs> There's a place here that just raised their wing prices to $27.99. Oh, my God. What'd she say? Holy crap! I spent six hundred bucks last night. What did she? What did she spend um, six hundred bucks on? Why is T saying I blocked her? I don't know. I asked her and she hasn't responded yet. Hey, right. Hey, Julie's heart. Welcome in. I love seeing you here. Poor T. There's no poor T. I know, right? Ridiculous, Jenny. Yes, they serve European size plates and prices. You know the Pelican Cafe, Jules? Yeah, two dollars and fifty cents for for two slices of tomato. Not even a whole tomato. Two slices. Love the old house restaurants. They're always have the best chefs. Yeah, but it just hey Holly, hi sweetheart. It was just honestly it. I, I personally don't think it was worth the money. I mean, maybe if it was like on Flagler in West Palm Beach or maybe downtown West Palm, I don't know. I just, I just, it was just, hi, Nola. It was just so much. Christopher, we miss you. Are you all right, honey? You never come around anymore. Are you feeling okay? Send out lots of positive vibes to Christopher, you guys. Hey, Nicole, thanks for coming in. 
Oh, nice, Kimberly. I'm just hanging out today. Took the day off. Was up late. I'm too old to be staying up so late. No kidding, right? I don't do well when I stay up late. Hi, Wanda. Hello, Wanda. I love saying her name, Wanda. Maybe it's because of my accent. Wanda. Oh, Julie, that's okay, honey. I just appreciate you being here. But thank you for offering to tell everybody that I was coming on. It's nice to have you back in the crowd. All right. I think I got everybody. If I missed anyone like Leon. Hello, Leon. Hello, hello. Leon. I'm not going to forget Leon. I would never... Mr. Zuckerman, I was like crazy looking around yesterday. I I invoiced you. I deducted the $35 off your gift certificate. I think you have $30 left and packed it up and shipped it. So your order is on its way to you, my dear. I had it on the slip. I just hadn't gotten to it, but I had it on the slip. All right. There's Mara. There's who, hey, Mara. Mara knows, Mara, Ricky and I went to the Pelican Cafe for breakfast this morning. Have you ever been, Mara, to the Pelican in Lake Park? Hey, Cookie, welcome in. Good to see you. I mean, it wasn't even like that good. It was just like, okay. Oh, Mara, yeah, so she's uh, so she's not going over to Eckert. She's going to Palm Beach State. I'll, I'll tell you, I've, everybody in the chat already knows about it because I talked about it a couple of times. I'll text you. I'll text you and tell you all about it or call you. So, yeah, unfortunately. Hey, Heather, welcome in. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was, it was, today was like the never ending day between everything that I did, like early this morning shipping, then brunch with my husband, then packing and shipping with Dolores. And then my daughter called me and she needed, oh, you know where my daughter needed to go? CVS. <laughs> Oh my God, she needed to go to CVS. So I took her. I took her to CVS. Wasn't so bad. Wasn't so bad, you guys. Wasn't so bad. It was just okay. But it was only one. The other one was at the mall buying shoes for school, which starts on Tuesday. So it wasn't so bad. I think that's the secret. Take them one at a time. Because then they don't have each other to say, do you like this? Do you think I should? Do you like this? Should I get this? And then, you know, they don't have each other. So she had to like shop like independently without her sister. I think when the two of them are together, it's like double trouble because they're like, oh yeah, get that. That's awesome. Yeah. You should get that. So. <laughs> yeah. They feed off of each other. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Marilyn. Welcome in sweetheart. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. 27 is good unless you ask Schreiker how many he did. How many did you list today? Uh, just 60 so far. 60. I got to do 25 more for make up for yesterday. Oh my gosh. That's what I, that's how I used to be. And how many sales did you have? I don't know. Seven or eight so far today. Not yeah. very many compared to. See you guys. Far. That's a perfect example. So if you're only having six or seven sales right now, don't, you got to keep listing. You got to keep listing because all this stuff that he's listing right now, when we are in like the middle of third quarter, people are going to be buying up his stuff like crazy, like crazy. Jenny says today is dead. And I know Jenny, I know how hard it is to get motivated when, when, um, Christine says I had zero. I know how hard it is to get motivated when you have zero sales or, you know, no sales or two sales. But, you know, I say it to you all the time. This is the time to be selling, selling and listing, listing. 
not selling, listing, listing, get that stuff up. Right. Yeah, because, you know, come October, November, you know, it's going to go. So it's just a matter of time. Right. Murray says, can you keep the um, the name of uh, your store? You know what, Murray? Um, Shrekker chooses to keep his store private. And some people are like that. There's a lot of people that keep even their Amazon uh, stores private. They choose not to share it um, just for I their own. Someday, but just not right now. You know. Yeah, just there's, for their own reason. There's plenty of drama going around already. So. Yeah, because... Care. Because people can sabotage you really, really like I, I honestly think I got sabotaged by someone who bought, um, they could have bought it under anybody's name. Um, so it would be somebody that I wouldn't know. It was, they gave me a negative feedback on a half an inch of a dish that I sold. And the dish was like eight ninety nine, I think, or no. $8, $9 yeah. with free shipping. It was like $8 yeah. with free shipping. So the, the cheap ones are the worst ones generally. Yeah, it was eight dollars with free shipping. It cost me, say, four dollars to ship out, plus the packing material, plus the fees. I maybe made two dollars on it, and I got a negative feedback, feedback on it. So, uh, um, my store is really, really small. I only, I only list when I do list. I try to list like really expensive things, like that Chanel pocketbook, you know, that I listed, and I checked today to see if they've sold it. Um, they haven't sold it yet. You know, they bought it from me for fifteen hundred, and they relisted yeah, it for three thousand. I can say get into November and it'll sell. Yeah, and this is the buying season, not the selling season. So yeah, three thousand dollars. So imagine you guys. It's a man. He made a fifteen hundred dollar investment, and re he relisted it for three thousand dollars. That's pretty amazing. Well, he knew he, he knew what it's going to do. You know, it's just a matter of time. Oh yeah, he knows quality. He yeah. knows the he knows the purse. He knows the purse is like beautiful, and you know, it had a couple of imperfections, and um, he uh, he like almost used my words word you know, for word. I've I've got someone wanting me to do some consignment purses, and I'm I'm leery. You know, they're high end, but. There's a lot of scams in that category, so there are. I haven't decided if I want to do them yet or not. But. You have to be really, really careful yeah. with horses. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because some people are just, you know, they're not educated, and they they might say that it's a fake and and return it and right. to refund. You know, that kind of money is is a lot of money after you've had. Or, it I mean, you out. always hear about people switching them out too, and that's the you know that's the problem. Yeah. So. Yep, it happened to my friend. I talked about it before. It happened with her with the seven thousand um, dollar Louis Vuitton, and you know what eBay told her that she had to file a police report in the town mm -hmm. of the woman or the man that bought the pocketbook. Yeah, she had to file a police report there. She had to call that town and file a police report. She couldn't even file a police report here. So, yep. She was out the seven thousand dollars, and she was out the pocketbook because eBay refunded the customer that claimed it was a fake. eBay refunded her, took the money from my friend's account. So not only was she out the money, she was also out the pocketbook. Yeah, you know, I try so hard to be a really good seller. You know, do everything the right way and everything. And I, I bought a lot of something from a seller the other day it was 500 plus units of something you know and i get it and there was only like 380 of them there mm -hmm. so i email them hey you know you only sent two-thirds of the product why don't you give me a third refund and you know what the, re the response is it was from a youtube auction no from ebay oh okay an ebay seller you know and he says well I had my son count them out, so he must have miscounted. Sorry about that. And that's it. That's all he had to say. No refund, no apologies, no nothing. You know, just, yeah, so what? You got a good deal. You send it back if you want, you know. Ridiculous. Oh, my gosh, you're kidding. He knew there wasn't 500 there when he sent them out, you know. How many was there? It's like 380, you know, so two-thirds of what they were supposed to be there. So. Have you contacted him again? No, nah, I left it. You know, 
I can send them back, but I'll make a lot of money on it. So, you know, I'm not going to bother with it, but that just tells you the kind of people, you know, are you going to leave a negative? I will eventually. Yeah. You will. Yeah, for sure. Maybe you can just leave a neutral and say, received the product. It's great. However, the order was not complete. Still a great deal. Maybe something like that. Right. Because negative is so harsh. He's already got a bunch of them though. And it, oh, but it looked like he'd cleaned up his act because he hadn't had any for like six months. But evidently not. So Yeah. I mean a negative to me is like a thumbs down. Speaking of thumbs down, there's ninety six people in the chat right now. Thank you, everybody. Should we do the random counter? Well, we have so many people here. A random okay, so what? The random the random picker. What are we randomizing? So you guys, there was a video the other night that got 20 thumbs down, which is really, really sad um, that there's this group of people that want to give me thumbs down for whatever stupid reasons they have. And um, so I said to go over and make a comment on the video. And if you make a comment on the video, I'm going to do a random picker. And I was showing the other day a it was three snowmen and two glittered pumpkins and one like um, silver pumpkin. Like the, it's decorations that you can keep up from like from Thanksgiving all the way through the winter months. It doesn't really scream Christmas or Thanksgiving. It's really cute. It's a really, really cute. Um, and so I didn't get a bid on it. So I said that I would give it away. So I'm going to be giving it away this evening. Um, See, I can look, look, look at Melanie's. Uh, I started there. putting invisible marks on high ticket items and use a black light and picture. It. I have had people return items that was not the one I sent to them. eBay back, back the buyer. See, that's that's the problem. You know, even you know if you mark your item in a way that can't be duplicated, and you get something else back you're still out, you know, as eBay won't back you up. Yeah. They always back the buyer. Except for my, in my case, you know, I got ripped off for a third of the product. I guess they would back me up if I wanted to return it, but. James says he does the invisible mark on the electronics. I just do real close ups of the serial numbers. So there's no disputing it. And if I had proof, I file a police report. Have you ever had to James? Have you ever had to do that? I wonder. I've never had um, I've never had a problem with anybody uh, returning anything to me on eBay. Um, Robin says she's never been an eBay fan. Yeah, I've never had a problem with anybody returning um, any, uh, something on eBay. But I did have a problem once with someone returning something on a, like a private sale which really upset me, but, um, you know, it happens. Was it your item or a switch? It was my item. It was my item. I hear bad stories about eBay. Well, no, it wasn't my, my personal item. It was, it was an item that I bought in an estate sale. Oh, um, um, I have been slowly moving items over to Mercari. I hear bad stories about eBay. I was an eBay back in the 90s and 200s. I'm afraid to go back now, Cindy says. You know, it, it's better and worse. It's just the way it is. It's harder now because there's a lot more competition. You know, you back in 2000, you could put anything on there and sell it, you know. Now you've got, you have to be very competitive. Yeah. Um, you can easily file an internet crime report on the IC3 government site. Hmm. I wonder what that's all about. Frank, do you know what that's all about? Frank is our resident police officer. <laughs> He's always here watching over. <laughs> and then let eBay know you filed it. And then they usually will work with you. Really, James? James is a wealth of information. Let me tell you something. That man is a wealth of information. I've never even heard that. I need to like 
James, you need to like tell me what that is. Let me just look at something really quick. I don't know. I, I've heard it before. Maybe Rockstar mentioned it or something, but I, I knew about it. Oh, really? You know what's amazing? I just wanted to um, just take a quick look at my back office for a minute. It's really amazing how, um, no, I, Frank says he hasn't heard of it. We need to start calling James Professor, <laughs> right? Um, somebody must have given me a shout out because I got so many new subscribers in the past two days. I know last week I got that nice shout out. Um, but um, details are hidden. Hmm, that's an unusual message. I just got another one. So I wonder who gave me a shout out. So whoever gave me a shout out, if you're watching from behind the scenes, thank you. Because I got so many new um, block the scammers, new subscribers in the past two days. It's amazing. It's awesome. It's nice to see the channel growing. So Murray saying block the scammers from YouTube or from eBay? Because there's scammers in both. <laughs> there's scammers in both. At, at least eBay lets you put them on a list. But, you know, all they got to do is create a, a different account. And, you know, just the same as here. You know, if you get blocked, just create a new account and go again. So, Right. Okay, so I'm going to screen share. And I'm going to do the random picker, you guys. Let's do this. eBay, he's saying. eBay. Did we have uh, a lot of commenters on that video? No. No? So some is, people have a good uh, percentage of winning. Yeah, no, we didn't have. I don't know if we should drop the link and let them go over and comment to, to enter more people. Maybe people didn't know about it. But no, there's not a lot of comments. There's maybe 10. So the Let's chances... The chances are going to be really great. What are you going to give them? What are they winning? I just told you. Yeah, well. They're winning they're winning that fall the pumpkin, the oh, glitter the pumpkin, pumpkin yeah. and the snowman. That's what they're winning. Beetle gal missed the video. Here, I'll drop it and I'll do it in like 5 minutes. This is the video here. This is the video. And now everybody that left a comment now is gonna like damn. They're gonna be mad. I had a ten percent chance of winning, and now it's gonna be worse. <laughs> oh yeah, and the thumbs up have gone way down, way up too. Okay, here's the here's the video. Bolo Buddies gave me another shout out. Did she? She's always giving me shout outs. Well, I watched uh, one of her bolo or one of her videos today, and she did mention you. Oh, she did. Well, that yeah, you know, you sold her one of their one of your boxes, and she sold something out of it. And oh yeah, one of I her sold know. videos. Heather's like, right? She's <laughs> like, ooh, what was that? <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, she always shares from her dibble boxes. Yep. Yeah, someone wrote someone wrote uh, in her Facebook page or something. What are these dibble boxes I keep hearing all about? She's like constantly talking about the dibble boxes. All right. T, I just got your message. You guys are leaving comments. Um, I need I need to call T. It's kind of important. Kathy, Kathy, your new kitchen is beautiful, honey. I've been seeing the pictures. I, I haven't commented, but I've been seeing the pictures on on Facebook. Oh my gosh, what a breath of fresh air. And I love the flooring. 
you do you guys are doing a phenomenal job with your remodeling it's beautiful very very beautiful oh yeah holly he can show something while i call t for sure yeah it's really nice kathy are you and your husband doing all the work or are you having it done it looks beautiful yeah the gangster dibble right wanda that was that's the one that's the most recent one her husband kept a whole bunch of stuff from the gangster dibble <laughs> it was awesome yes she is going to palm beach state kathy i'll fill you all in you'll have to call me during your lunch break this week and i'll fill you in with what's going on yep she gave up her scholarship pretty devastating my husband was actually like a little bit normal today mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a little bit normal he hasn't been able to see straight for days you can imagine as a dad how upset so when i heard him today he was being normal yeah he was being <laughs> normal <laughs> that's that's my husband's personality though well you you've heard him before in the car when we've been talking and you hear how he is he's very boston <laughs> is all i can say he's very very boston and he has very strong opinions about things <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes he does I know, James. I know. I know it's a lot of dough. That's why my husband's like out of his trees right now. He is out of his trees, out of his mind. But it's okay. He did. He, he we had a really, uh, you know, I, I said to him when we went out for brunch this morning, I said, can we, can we not talk finances, school, or politics we can talk about anything else but those three things and he was like okay because you can't have a conversation with my husband without him bringing up politics he has got such a strong opinion about politics in school and finances <laughs> so it's just like ah it's really hard to like sit across from your husband and not have when you have kids and not and not discuss those three major important important components of a married life it's hard so as a parent you, so you talked a lot about your business then no we didn't talk we didn't talk a lot about the business we talked about the restaurant um we talked a little bit about old days which is always really really sad um you know we talked about that so it's you know it's 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 tough being our marriage is because of what we've been through you guys it's it's really tough it's really really tough yeah he's a big yankee fan absolutely yes sandy we're having an auction it's hard as a parent but trust her it's up to her and she will make her way thank you elaine she will make her way she's got a really good head on her shoulders she's got a really really good head on her shoulders so yeah we talked a lot about um my sister's husband died um the day before yesterday but you guys i'm a little bit i'm estranged from my family i don't really um talk to my family up north and he's 57 years old he died in his sleep yeah i haven't talked to my family since my son died it was the last time i spoke to my family um, you guys, some of you know that, you know, cause I've shared that before, but, um, yeah. So my sister's husband died. And so we talked a lot about that and like old memories and yeah. So, you know, just, uh, just a normal, just try to, you know, had a nice, have a nice, uh, breakfast, I guess, brunch. All right. I'm going to pick the random picker before I get all emotional and start crying on you. <laughs> <sighs> um, okay, so I need to do this and I need to go, let's see, here.
and I put the URL in and I'm going to, you guys ready? Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Let's start. Uh oh. I put it in. This is the one. Let me grab it. And let's try this again. Oh, how come it won't get rid of it? Hmm. Yeah, get the get the comments again. There you go. There you go. All right, you're good to go now. Okay, there it goes, you guys. There it goes. There it goes. Who is it? Wanda. Wanda. Awesome. 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 And she's in the chat because I know I saw her. Wanda, you still here, honey? Wanda, Wanda, Wanda. Where is she? Where is she? Uh oh, she's Make not a comment, Wanda. Wanda, are you here? Yes, she is. She got it. She got it. Yep. Awesome, Wanda. Congratulations, honey. I'm so glad you got it. You're gonna love it. It's a really, really beautiful one. Awesome, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everyone for being here. Um, Shriker, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna put you on. You have a lot. That you can um, that you can show, because um, I'm gonna I need to call T really quick. Make sure everything's okay. T, I'm gonna call you. Okay, I'm gonna call you on uh, on the other phone. So, all right, I'm gonna put you on full screen. All right. Okay, there you go, honey. Thank you. All right, I have a cookbook lot, thirteen books, and I started at twenty dollars. The gas grill cookbook to start with. Uh, kind of a cookbook. Espresso quick reference guide. Over 1,000 recipes. There's a lot of them in there. Super Soy, the Miracle Bean. Includes a cookbook of 50 soy recipes. The Perfect Recipe, Getting It Right Every Time by Pam Anderson. Let's see, I know there's got to be some illustrations in here. Yeah, mostly black and white. Barbara having trouble with your YouTube. Uh, the Allergy Self-Help Cookbook. 325 natural food recipes free of wheat, milk, eggs, corn, yeast, sugar, and other common food allergens. Not Baywatch, Pam Anderson. That's right. Watts for breakfast. Light and easy. Morning meals for busy people. Cooking under pressure. People still cook with uh, pressure cookers? The Vegetarian Grill. 200 recipes for inspired flame-kissed meals by Andrea Chessman. Fired up flatbreads and pizzas. Oh, they do. Good. Yeah, what are those uh, new little pressure cookers that everybody uses now? 
you set them and forget them. I don't remember what they're called. The Kitchen Garden Cookbook. More than 200 recipes, picking and cooking tips, preserving ideas. Well, that's good. It tells you how to preserve if the fall is coming. Instapots. That's right. That's right. A lot of people using those nowadays. Superfood Smoothies by Julie Morris. Is Julie still here? Hmm. All right. Instant pot. Here is the Province Cookbook by Patricia Wells. All right, remember we're starting at $20 if anyone's interested. And here's the cook's garden growing and using the best tasting vegetables. like mostly black and white pictures in this one. Oh my god, Shriker. Uh -huh. Look at this. You found a new friend. I found another dog. This is the second time. This is, is the second the time. One? It's shaking the poor thing. I have no idea who it belongs to. Yeah. It was I was outside talking to T and it came walking up on the porch. There you go. Look at it. He didn't what am come I going to do? What? He didn't come from very far away. I'm going to look at it's shaking. I need to find its parents. Yeah, he's one of your neighbors. He belong, he's got to belong. He's so well manicured. Yeah. Is it a girl or a boy? Oh, it's a little it's a little boy. Oh my god. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go outside and see if I can find its yeah. parents. Go knock on one of the doors. They can no, he doesn't have a tag, Jill. It's the first thing I looked for. Oh, he's so scared. He's like, he's like right up against me. He's so scared. It's okay, baby. This happened to me, you guys, like two weeks ago. I found a little white dog, and I went driving around the neighborhood, and the mother was outside looking for him. Right. Her. Her name was Bianca. It was a little white dog. I'm going to go walk the neighborhood. Shriker, entertain everybody. You guys, I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. I'm sure someone's so like like upset that this dog is missing. I'm going to go see if I can find who it belongs to. All right. All right, you guys. I'll be back. <laughs> oh, Donna. All right. And the last one is the Chocolate Pack Jam Field Butter Rich No Hold Barred Cookie Book by Judy Rosenberg. Let's see. We had Jenny at 20. So we're looking for 22. So that's a nice hardcover. Oh, Saxon's bidding on the dog. Well, you may have to go pick that one up. All right. So we have 13. One, two, three, there's number five. Here's number six. And number seven. Pressure cooking with the Instapot. I don't know if they're using an Instapot on this one, but. Breakfast. Breakfast. 
the perfect recipe, getting it right every time. If that's possible, I suppose it is for some. Lobster. There's Super Soy. Espresso. And the gas grill cookbook. Still time for grilling. We're only halfway through summer. Okay, so we have Jenny at $20. There we go. Any other interest? That'll be a heck of a buy. All right, Brins, we'll uh, check you out in a few minutes when Donna comes back. Did you get a wrench yesterday on T's channel? Auctions for you? Yeah, Saxton can mod if she likes. That's fine. Not a whole lot going on, though, to, to be modding. <laughs> if we only have one bid. We'll close this one out and go to the next. So we'll go once. You would just want the espresso. Well, thank you, Saxton. All right, there's T. Okay, Branch, yeah, you can bid. Did you want to bid on these brands? We'll give you a couple seconds to come in. Cookies, cookies, cookies. So, nice little lot, heavy lot. All right, Saxton, go ahead and close it down. Jenny got a good good bargain there. Write that down. Oh, cookbooks. All right, thank you. All right, the next lot is going to be aviation related books. I believe there are 12 of them, all about flying and aviation. Started at 20. Charles Lindbergh and the Spirit of St. Louis. Mercy Pilot, the Joe Crossan story. It has some nice illustrations also. Let's see, Biplane by Richard Bach. Fragile Wings and Gentle Giants by Harold Salute. A brief, brief History of Flight from Balloons to Mach 3 and Beyond. 
Hopefully there's some pictures in this one. Well, I'm not seeing any. There are not many anyway. Wager with the Wind, the Don Sheldon story. And this one's certainly been read. It does show a little wear on it. Wings of Madness. Alberto Santos Dumont and the Invention of Flight by Paul Hoffman. Jenny's in for 20. Thank you. Heroes of 50 Years of Flying Skymen by Larry Forrester. From Pole to Pole. Roald, is that Roald Amundsen's Journey in Flight? I haven't had to say his name for a while. Flying in the ice and snow, it looks like. Uh, and one of the classics of aviation, Stick and Rudder. Every pilot's probably read this one. Hi, Jill. The Fullness of Wings, The Making of a New Daedalus, Gary Dorsey. And the last one, To Fly and Fight, Memoirs of a Triple Ace. By Colonel Clarence E. Bud Anderson. Forward by Chuck Yeager. Uh, thank you, T. Yeah, the, the aviation's a little bit worn as they've been read. And this one is inscribed as well by Bud Anderson, the author. So a nice signed copy. So that's the lot. I'll just say 12 books. There you go. Yes, that includes the shipping, Brins. All included. And we have 22 with Brins. Anybody else? Jenny at 24. So if you know a pilot or want to be a pilot, some nice reading here. Okay, I found its mom. Yay. I know. How far away was that? Um, it was about uh, 10 houses away. Oh, took a while then. John is going to come back with two dogs and a cat. No, I'm not, Frank. But that, how strange is that, that that happened, like, to me twice in, in less than two weeks' time? Well, in your community, it seems to be happening often, isn't it? But yes, it may be cats next time. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, Bryn's at 26. And Donna wouldn't let the cat in, that's right. <laughs> Well, she might come back with a cat if there was a dog in tow as well. She wouldn't want to split them up. No, I would not, James. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Right. Jill says her chat is frozen. Refresh, Jill. You got Jenny at 28. Saxton's going to bring all of the cats. Well, right, Amy? Right. I agree. <laughs> Cottage either. Oh, yeah. Uh, wrench, Bringe. Okay. Wrench gems. All right. Good luck in there. Right. Yeah, cats probably don't like vehicles too well. I got scared. I, I didn't know what it was. I saw this like little tiny thing coming up the stairs on the porch while I was talking to T. I'm like, what the hell is this now? Uh, you were the only living thing it could find. Poor thing. Yep. It was scared, but it was happy when it found its home. Right, Jill? I'm the dog catcher. They're all drawn to me. I don't know. The dog whisperer. Well, at least you didn't have to keep it for very long. No, That's I didn't keep the I didn't keep Bianca for very long either. Right. All microchip. Yeah. I I asked the mom how it got out, and she said that she just. I know. Thankfully, it wasn't a skunk. No kidding. I asked the mom how he got out, and she said that. She never puts him on a leash. She usually lets him out the front door. He does his business and just comes right back in. But today he just took off. Yeah. Did she know it was missing yet? Oh, yeah. She was outside with the... Oh. I, I looked it down both sides of the street and I saw uh, yeah. I saw somebody with a flashlight, like, sh like looking around with the flashlight all the way down the street. So I just started walking towards her. And, of course, I'm saying, are you... Are you missing a dog? And all I could hear was because I can't hear anything. So I had to get like really up close to her. Oh, she she was kind of old and elderly. You know, Jill, now that you mention that, she says no skunks, no skunks. in yeah. Palm Beach. Now that she says that, like I don't think I've ever smelled skunk smell down here maybe skunks need to live where it's cold elaine have you ever had a skunk they live around here and it's not cold here yeah well if it would have had to stay out all night then it would have been in trouble look at look at saxton yeah modding she's filling in come to the farms there's skunks out there yeah yeah, they just don't like the city too well, evidently. Yeah, uh, 12 aviation books, yep. No, there's no forest here where I live. They're in at my house, my real house, there's a huge. <coughs> your real house? Called? Aren't you in your real house? What? You said <coughs> your real house. No, this is a, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> this is a make-believe house. This is just the reseller cottage. No, um, um, we have a, is it called a preserve or a reserve? I don't know. It's one reserve. or the other. It's a reason. Oh, well, I think they both of them, depending on the situation. So who do we have? We have French gems. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they refer to it as a preserve or a reserve, but that's like directly behind my house. 
which I was I was just writing about this in my my neighborhood app. Um, people were talking about seeing a huge increase in bobcats, and and I had talked about this live before to you guys. So sorry that I'm repeating myself, but what's happened is is communities have developed at such a rate all around these like preserved areas and the animals are like multiplying with each other. And there's like so many animals and they like were trying to get out. They need to go in there and do like animal control with all of the fox and the coyotes and the, the um, bobcats. And our biggest problem in Colorado is raccoons, skunks and coyotes. And it's scary. Coyotes are scary. All right, you guys, I'm going to go up. Did you do two lots? Yeah. How many did you prepare? Three. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe while I show this, you can go get another lot together. Yeah, Jenny, I'll send you an invoice Brent, and Brynn, too. Awesome, I'll send you guys. It tonight or in the morning. Probably in the morning. All right, so this is what I have. We're going to have a little, uh, we're going to have a little geography lesson. I'm going to hold up. These are magnets. I'm going to hold up the magnet and you guys are going to tell me what part of the country it's in. How's that sound? So there's a total of one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. There's 25 of them. Okay. So this one doesn't have a name on it. It looks like a Mexican probably, what, what are they called? Hacienda? No, it doesn't say anything in the back. And it's made out of resin. This one's just made out of resin. So they probably traveled a lot and just picked up magnets. This one is... Where's this, you guys? Who knows where this is? Italy. No one's guessed it. That's Italy. Okay, here's another one. Is that part of the boot? No. <laughs> There's another cute one. So, I mean, let's start these off at um, $20. All right. I think that they're pretty awesome. Now that's telling you where it's at or where it was made. It is made in PRC. Is that Puerto Rico? I don't know. It's hand painted. R A V E N N A. Ravina. Mina at. Basilica di San Vitale. It's all hand painted, you guys. They did a nice job on that. All right, and then we have this one, which is another Ravenna. Just a canal. No, it looks like it. It's all magnet. What about this one? Lanza Roger. I mean, it kind of looks like lava to me. Oh, you're right, James. Public uh, People's Republic of China. Yeah, PRC. You're right. No, that PRC one we had. I said Puerto Rico, but James was pointing out it was probably China, and it is. Hey, Lenny. Oh, Evil Lenny, yeah. Might be able to help you with that. So, yeah, this looks like a piece of lava to me. Mr. Jonathan Roseberry. 
Thank you so much, sweetheart, for the super sticker. That was so nice of you. So nice to see you in the chat. Thank you so much. Evil Lenny says, clothing just is not my thing. Tristi. Beautiful castle on the ocean. It looks like it's got some scarring on it, though. It's handmade in Italy. This is like looking at postcards, you guys. This one is Padova. Padova. Where's Padova? Anybody know what Padova is? Uh, yes, Shelly, she did. She was successful. I did, Shelly. A city in Italy? Is it Padova? I don't know. Castel de Monte. Del Monte. Del Monte means of the world. Castello is, it's in Italy, Christine says. So they must have traveled all around Italy and bought these. I was going to say, so far it looks like it's all Italy, right? Um, we didn't know where this one we didn't, we didn't know where this one was. Did anybody look this one? Lanzarote. Is that a, a T? Yeah. L A N Z A R O T E. Just Sandy. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in. I have to show off. Hi, just Sandy. I have to show off. Um, Lanzarote is an island of the Canary Islands. The piece that I just got. I got it, honey. It's beautiful. So where is this? Uh, Canary Islands. Oh, you're kidding. That's where my cousin lives. In Spain. Well, we know that's Paris. And this is just a rubber one. What about... Lychee. 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 How beautiful that is. That's in the Italy. The detail is amazing. It doesn't say anything on the back. It is resin, but nice detail. Yeah. So these are, these are great items for people that like to list smalls and don't have a lot of room. Is that That's a, in Italy too, Mary says, Lychee. This is a park. See, that name looks like uh, ice, it's a ice or Greenland. K-O-C-J-A-N-S-K-E. Cave in Slovenia. So where's that? Slovenia? Where is Slovenia? One of those European countries, isn't it? Let's see. Did this one say made in China on it? Is that a, I don't think so. That doesn't say China on it. Let me see what it says. Yeah, Slovenia is in Europe, Czech Republic. Okay. Oh yeah, it does. It does, Mary. It says made in China. That's the very, very bottom of it says China. That's too bad that it wasn't made in Italy, but the ones that are hand painted say hand painted. Uh, okay, where did you say that was? Uh, Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe, Barcelona. Look at all those sailboats gathered all together. Holy cow! How do they keep from running into each other? It's not like a highway, right? That? Oh, what this? No, the one you're holding up. No, all those boats. No, it's the water. I know. How do they stay from running into each other? Who knows? Casotta del Mare More. Waterfall in Italy. This has got a magnet, stuck to a magnet.
No religious one. There are marked channels with buoys. Vieste. 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 It must be in Italy too, but I don't know where in Italy. I don't know, you know, just because I'm from Italy, I don't know every area of Italy. Oh my. It says it, it says it's a town in Italy. Let's see. I've been here. In the province of Foggia, in the Apulia region of southeast Italy. Southeast Italy? Yep. Huh. Where's There's Rome? Rome. Oh, yeah. You know where Rome is at. Lucy. I love Lucy. Dorney is that the oh, Dorney Park? Disney Parks. It's an American flag. It says made in Taiwan, so it's probably vintage. Is that the same as the other one? Are they the same? Yep. We get two of those. Did we look at this one? Nope. Padova. Padova. Oh, this is Padova too. There's two, there's also, there's two of Padova. Now, where is it at compared to the country? Padova, England, Italy, Northern Italy. Firenze. Ravina. Dorney Park is in Allentown. Okay. That wasn't Which Dorney. One? That was Dorney. The Which one was the Dorney Park? This one? The flag. Oh, the, fl the flag? You said Disney. I said Dorney. It says Dorney, right? Yeah. Dorney Park. And that's in oh, Allentown. Oh, Dorney Park. I thought it's a Disney Park. Next to Brian's place. No idea. Nobody's interested in the magnets. We've got James at 20. Grotte di Castellana. Looks like a cave. Yeah, there's lots of caves. Let's see what it says. Italian. So that must have been their thing. They must have bought. <clears throat> they must have bought uh, souvenirs of magnets when they traveled. Yeah, now people just buy those little pins, right? Stick pins to put on a hat or something. I think that's all of them. I think we looked at them all. All right, we'll close it down. All right. It's a grotto. Yes, it is. Anybody else? Or should we give them to James? Oh, Christine buys magnets too. Oh, she likes to buy magnets. I think anybody that may have visited this area is, you know, if they had this magnet and it fell off and, and broke, they might be looking for it. You know, they're going to turn to eBay. Is it James Cisco? Yep. James. James, you haven't bid on anything of mine in forever in a day. I don't even see James's bid. It's way, 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 way up there. Sold to James Cisco Magnets. For $20. Thank you, James. Awesome. All right, let me get a little box to put these in. He said he bought some clothing a month ago. Oh, he did buy some clothing. You're absolutely right, James. I forgot about that. Hmm. 
All right. I think they're very cool. E Evil Lenny opted for a cheaper method of souvenirs. <laughs> when the kids were little and we used to do a lot of traveling, I used to tell the kids that they had to, they could pick out a rock from wherever we stopped. Oh, that's right. A small rock, rock, no bigger than two inches. Yeah, it couldn't be I mean, too big. We don't want to weigh you down. <laughs> yeah, so they used to, uh, that, that was their thing. They used to find a pretty rock and then you know that would help them like remember the area that we visited which was pretty cool <clears throat> it saved me money <laughs> okay here we go i'm gonna do some uh, comics you guys all right let's see if i have to angle this down just a little bit all right let's see if my comic people are in here 50 cents number 135 the green lantern Number 137, number 200, number 189, number 204, number 187 again, or just a different one? Oh, 137, sorry. Um, 167, um, 146, these are an excellent, like probably never opened condition, 138. All right, Saxton, go ahead, honey. We'll be, we'll be here when you get back. Uh-oh. Harley Quinn, number six. More Harley. Another Harley, number five. Another Harley, number four. Uh, number 51. Number 39. Number 30. Oh my God, is Steve in the chat? He'll be so upset I'm showing Harley again. Yeah, we haven't seen him yet. He hasn't been in, huh? Nope. Oh, boy. Maybe Saxon will buy him for him. Maybe. Avengers number 24. Number 25. Well, since Saxton is bidding on them, I think she's happy that Steve's not here. That's right. This one's just says August on it. Okay, Wolverine 100. The Incredible Hulk, Marvel number one. Like, this should be in a bag and boarded because it's in excellent condition. Quicksilver. Again, perfect condition. Look at It's excellent condition. Quicksilver number two. Uncanny Origins number six. Featuring the Beast. Featuring Nightcrawler number eight. Featuring the Incredible Hulk number five. Featuring Fire Lord number six. No, number four, sorry. Here we have Wolverine. I don't know what number this one is. Here's another Wolverine and another 104 Wolverine. And this one is number 117 Wolverine. One eighteen. Don't know the number. 
must be 19 because here's 20, but not necessarily because this one says 63 and this one says 67. So they're completely out of order. And this one is 84 and 76, 77, 73. This one's 86. And then we're back to Avengers number seven. These are Marvel. This is number 11. This is number 12. This is number 13. Here's number five. And number six. Number four. This one's marked $8. This is number eight. Number nine. Number 674, number five, number six, number seven. Here's another six again, but it's different. Here's an eight, a four, a two, and is it the same number six? I don't know. I don't remember. And here's a number 26. Okay, Christine, go to bed, honey. Good night. Sweet dreams, sweetheart. Here is two months until A A A, A us X, <laughs> whatever that means, 25. This one's number five. This one's number seven. This one's number 12. There's a lot of Avengers in this one. This one's number 14. This one's number 11. This one's number 14.1. What does that mean? Hi, Rebecca. Welcome in. It was probably a little mini series, four volumes or six volumes or something. So instead of doing 14, 15, 16, they just do point one, point two. Ah, uh, Avengers Academy. Academy. Or it could just be different covers as well. Academy again. Number 17. Number 19. Number 24. This one is. Hmm. I don't know. X Men something. Marvel Comics it says March X Men Deluxe, but I don't see a number on it. This one's one twelve. No, I don't see a number on. I don't see a number on some of them. I don't know why. I just don't. This one is number sixty eight. Number six, number 59, number 58, 47, 46, 20, 113, 66, 68, this is June 114 again. Here's 111 and then 112. And then we have number 36, Harlequin, and number 39. I don't know what this one is. D Do Doom, maybe? 2099, Doom. All right, and we have Saxon at 60. Yep, and I want to see if Rebecca wants to come back in.
And Kyle jumps in. Kyle's got money burning a hole in his pocket. <laughs> I'll wait until he sees all those graded comics you have. I don't think I'm going to bring them tonight. Then he'll be really excited. All right, we've got Kyle at one. Benjamin, goals, goals, goals. Sexton comes at 110. There's a lot of Harlequin in this lot. Now, do you say Harley Quinn or Harlequin? I, I, said, I said Harley Quinn. Okay. Harlequin. I may have said Harlequin, all one word. Yeah. Kind of like the word, <laughs> kind of like the word come here. Yeah, exactly. Is just Sandy still in the chat? I wanted to show off the beautiful piece that she made me. I forgot to do it in between the lots. I don't know if she's still here. Facebook user. Yeah, always have old photos. Oh, I bought some too. I need to show those maybe. Some you military. have some old photos? Yeah, I bought some military photos this weekend. They're not awesome. in great shape, but they're really authentic for sure. Yeah, Sandy's still here. Oh, awesome. Sandy, I'm going to show off your beautiful piece you, you made me. Facebook user, you need to come over to YouTube, however, if you want to bid and you have to be registered. Oh, I'll show it, Rebecca. <laughs> Saxton, you don't want to lose your wrench, do you? Huh. Um, just search my name on YouTube. I'll go over in a minute and do it. Are you going to drop the link? I don't think they can click on the link on Facebook. They have to actually go over to a YouTube yeah, to the so YouTube. I'll go over to Facebook in a minute. Or James is here. He could go over if he wants to. I know he knows you're joking, and you know I'm joking, Saxton. Kyle is at 125. Going once to Mr. Kyle. Did Rebecca say out? Yes. <laughs> right, Elliot. All right, Mr. Kyle okay. Elliot. Someone on Facebook needs the link to here. Someone on Facebook what? Needs the link to get here. Oh, yes, James. Um, someone's over on the Facebook page, and I don't know if they're on mine or T's, but they don't know how to come over here. So I don't know if you can drop the link. But I don't think they can use the link. I think they have to actually come over. I don't know, James. It just says a Facebook user. So I don't know which I'm broadcasting on both my um, storage unit buyers group and auctions for you um, in addition to broadcasting here. So I don't know if they're in my group or T's group. Oh, did he, Marilyn? Awesome. Uh, Facebook user, can you tell us which group you're watching us in? I'm broadcasting. If you're still watching. I'll just drop it out of the um. Dropped it in storage. 
I put it in one of them. I don't know which one it is, though. Okay, you guys, let me show you what just Sandy made for me. <clears throat> so probably about a year ago or so, I had a fundraiser for um, Laurie. Um, it, it, her, her YouTube name is um, um, Laurie's Story, and she needed a little help in hand, so um, I had a fundraiser for her, and a lot of people contributed, and thank you so much for that. And um, and so, yeah, I miss Laurie. I haven't seen her around in a long time. I'm not really sure, you know, what happened to her or where she is. But I bought this opal. Um, just Sandy was showing the opal, and I bought the opal. And um, I said to her, I said, Sandy, I'd like to give you some more money because I want I want you to make me a pendant with the opal, um, and I want to buy it. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, another opal, because opals, is these earrings from Junebug, they represent my two daughters, or both opals. So I always say Cesarina and Angelina. I love these earrings Junebug gave me. I never take them off. Um, so anyway, so back to Sandy. So she had this opal, and um, she had a really hard time. I, I kind of gave her an idea of what I wanted, and she kind of had a hard time, and I get that, Sandy, um, creating what I wanted created because it was very emotional. It had a lot to do with Denali. So, but she surprised me and she finally made me this, um, this one and I'll show it to you. Um, and then I'll, I'll show it to you up close and Sandy, there it is right there. Um, it will hang. I probably will change the, the chain on it, but it will hang probably about right there, but I'll give you a close up on it. And Sandy, let us know what kind of, um, what kind of opal this is. Um, it's got a lot of fire in it. It's got a lot of yellow. Um, let's see if I turn off this light. If you can see it better. You might have to put a white piece of paper behind it. It looks pretty yellow. So is that all silver? Yep, it's all silver. I just don't know. I've I've never really seen a yellow opal. I don't know. Like I know that she gets opals from different countries. Um but it does have a ton of fire in it and it's really beautiful. If you can see it, there it is. Ethiopian opal. It's an Ethiopian opal. It's beautiful, Sandy. And it has her stamp on it. That's her her stamp, her logo. And it's marked Sterling. And she handcrafted this. I wanted her to make it on my channel, but she just went ahead and made it, which it was a nice surprise. Yeah, so it's really pretty. And there it is. It's very beautiful. Yep, she does nice work. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you so much. I love it. So. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, okay, so let's see. You guys want to buy some fabric? What do you think? Facebook user says I subscribed. Okay, but you need to come over to to the um to the live. Well, we dropped the link on at all of them, so it's up to them at this point. Right. Yes, Mary says she wants to see some fabric, so does Deborah Reed. All right, so let's um let's do this piece here. I'm going to probably guess it's approximately maybe three, let me say, three or four yards. Um, there is just a little bit of a chunk missing off of it. Looks like she used it for something. 
I'll come over and make something else. All right, Sandy, that sounds like a plan. It's denim. I'm going to try that. You add quite a few pieces in, or just one off. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with one, and then if I don't get a bid, I'll add, I'll add to it, like I was doing last night. But somebody might just be interested in the one piece of denim. So okay. for a five dollar start. Get me five then, okay? Thank you, thank you, Heidi. Thank you so much. Uh, Marilyn, no, we really can't. We it, it, they have to be right here in the YouTube chat. Where's the private chat? Well, I think she's referring to maybe somebody on a phone or something to those lines. I don't know what the private chat means. If, if you were talking to her on the phone or texting with her on the phone or something. Maybe oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so this is like a dark denim. Or maybe if we had somebody pulled up on a Facebook private chat or something. Um, maybe. Everybody <clears throat> needs to be able to see it here in, the, here in this chat. Mary comes in at nine. Thank you, Mary. Mary, Mary, Mary. Did I packed your stuff up, I think. Yeah, I, I know, Marilyn. Some people will do that, but, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that other than it's kind of, I, I, I won't I won't address it very well. I, I, For everybody's benefit, everybody needs to be here in this chat so everyone can see the bid being placed. I, I know what you're saying, though kind of strange that that would happen well you know different auctioneers different things but was it a youtube auction marilyn that somebody didn't want to be on the uh, in the in the, the um the live chat was it youtube somebody's youtube auction yeah I, i've seen it happen a few times so what is the person like that's hosting the auction? What do they say? I've got an auction. I've got a bid on the phone for $13. Right. Exactly. Really? Yeah. That sounds a little weird. Well, I mean, it, it's probably legit, but it also could not be legit as well. You know, I mean, if somebody, if somebody didn't have a YouTube channel and they wanted to call my phone and they could, and they wanted to speak out loud, you know, so people could actually hear it. But I don't know, maybe n not identify their, themselves. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't allow it anyways, right. period. It's just too complicated. It's too complicated. It could be, you know, my cousin in Italy <laughs> bidding, exactly. who, you know, who knows who it is. That's, That's why we have everybody to be shown in the chat to make it legit. Yeah. That's why we have everybody register. All right, we have Rebecca at 13. What's T talking about? You may have accidentally blocked that person, Marilyn. Uh, for a reason for somebody doing that offline bidding kind of thing. Are you sure Marilyn just didn't? What's T asking me? I'm not sure. <laughs> Mary's at 15. T, I don't know what you're asking me. Well, one of the other channels will sometimes have somebody on the phone bidding or texting them to bid. And so the auctioneer puts that as a bid into the chat. Okay. Okay, Facebook user, thank you for being back, but you're still, you're not here. You're on Facebook. So there's nothing you can do. You can't bid. You can't do anything, but you can hang out with us. You can watch. You can watch, but you have to be on YouTube and you have to be registered in order to be able to bid. Rebecca's at 18. T, 
T, can you go over and see where this Facebook user is? No, 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 T. That's not what she's saying at all. Mary's out. Rebecca's at 18. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, okay. That's a that's a possibility that she couldn't see the other person actually bidding, but I don't think that's what she's saying. Okay, I'm in storage unit buyers group. Okay, that's great, but you have to be over on YouTube. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> and James is over there. Hey, Brie. Why is Brie writing good? Why is everybody talking in code tonight? <laughs> I don't understand everybody talking in code. Brie, did someone ask you how you were? Well, we want to know how Brie is. Huh? We want to know how she is. Brie's good. She's fine. And Julie's here. Maybe she can decipher the code for us. Julie. <laughs> She's laughing. Uh, yeah, Julie, James, can... James, don't worry about it anymore. We've done all we can for for Facebook, Yeah. So. It, it just could be, you know, someone trolling. That's I don't right. know. Okay. This is what I have. I'm going to count them as I put them down. These are boot socks, uh, size 4 to size 10. They're low. They're... I don't know what boot socks are. They've got those ribs. Maybe it helps. I don't know. I, I don't know what boot socks are. I have no idea. Maybe They're those uh, ribs catch on the upper part of the boot so they can't slide down inside. Maybe. I have no idea. How many what? do you want to do? How much? What What in the world is Beetle Gal writing? They're all speaking in code tonight. That's what she's trying to do. <laughs> oh, my God. Beetle Gal. Getting in on the action. Are we uh, doing 30? Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mary. Size brown, faded glory, size 4 to 10. All right. Thank T you. found the Facebook person and dropped the link. So. Oh, it's Pig Latin, she said. All yeah. right. All right. <laughs> oh, Rebecca knew it was Pig Latin. The red fox jumped over the fence. There you go, Frank. Go get some popcorn. Here's uh these are brand new. They just don't have the tags on them. So that's number three. These are one, two, three pairs of socks. One, two, three. So no, T, I, T, I did send you the link. So you can't say you weren't invited now. Yeah, keep laughing. What is she saying? <laughs> this is it. The, the cow jumped over the moon. <laughs> Who's she going to keep to... laughing at? Showing your age, ladies. Okay, here's three more pairs of like a nice textured brown, two browns and a black. So there's a whole bunch here. I'm just going to throw them on the table. Who needs socks? These are all brand new socks. These came from the lady that was the obsessive buyer. So the tags, the tags are removed, but they're to see they're together. So I don't know what kind of socks they are, but knowing her, right? They're probably expensive socks. So these you have black, gray, and gray. Deborah's yeah. in the dirty. Polar, polar socks, polar graphics, horses. Faded glory. She was slumming that day. 
Here's another three pack of all black socks. Again, they're um, they're pretty. Here's another three pack, gray, black, and cream trouser socks. The only problem is, is that if you're buying them for reselling, I don't know what you would, because I don't know if they have names on them or anything. They're just they're just connected. Hello, Dale. Dale, did you take a shower? These have um, dogs on them. These have dogs on them also. These have dogs on them also. No, no, no three kitty cats. cats? Huh? No kitty cats? No, dogs. It's a dog kind of night. There's more dogs. Hi, Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Here's another Faded Glory. Here is Cherokee women's socks. Let me see if it says a size on them. They, they've got roosters on them. They're roosters, baby. Oh, here you go. There's your cat for your cat lovers. Kitty cat. Kitty cat. Do you have a cat, striker? No. No. White pear. Here is another cat. Cats with birds. Cats with birds. This one is Twinkle Toes Socks of the World. Poland. Twinkle Toes. Oregon. Socks of the World. Here is tea, Teapots. Misty's in for 35. Here is Scooby Scooby Doo. I found a lot of Scooby Doo stuff from this woman. She loves Scooby Doo. And now Mary's writing in code. Oh, Scooby is good. You should make a whole lot of Scooby Doo. Here is, um, I know, I, I need to put all the Scooby Doo stuff together. You guys remember these socks? I, I had like a hundred pairs of these socks and I sold them uh, for a weekend special to everybody, but there's. Um, I think one pair, one pair left. I threw it in the lot. These are Lima um, Happy Birthday socks. Here is a pair of socks that say Wolf on them. It's a pretty big lot. Here's another three three pack. It's got black, cream, and gray. Here is, they're called Fancy Footworks Wheelhouse. They're more of the those chihuahua. chihuahuas. Here's another cat one. Here is a just pretty kind of flower one. Um, some of them have tags, Beetle Gal. Some yeah, some of them, them. Some of them have tags, but they're the ones with the tags say. Some of them, the ones, some of the ones with the tags say Cherokee on them, and some of them are like this fancy foot wheelhouse. I don't know what company that is. This one's called Air Socks, um, Faded Glory. Oh no! Now Jack's writing in code too. Polar Socks. What's the matter? Jack's writing in code. I can't hear you. Uh, Peggy, we need 39, please. $2 increments. Uh, Jack Robertson wrote, congrats, Ed. To Ed? Ed hasn't been here yet. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's in, maybe he thinks, maybe he's in someone else's chat. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, at a name. different, uh, and Ed is bidding somewhere else, and he wrote it in here by accident. Yeah. Here's a white pair, because that happens sometimes. People get confused what stream no, they're in. Pirates good at doing that. <laughs> Here's another one, Portland. Here's another three pack, white and two shades of gray. This is like a blue gray, and this is like a diamond print gray. These are just one, 
two and three Argyle socks. And is this one? Let's see if Are this one. anklets. Oh yes, this one goes to this one. And that's it. That's all of them. If you want me to give you a count, I will. I'll let you know how many I have here so you know what you're paying. There's three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, and a pair of slippers. 53 pairs of socks. You can just open up your sock drawer and throw them all out. And just, you'll have all brand new socks. Wow, you don't have to do I've done, for seven weeks. I've done that before, you know. Just throwing all the socks out. And when my kids were little, I used to buy all the same socks. Like when they when they stopped wearing the girly, like frilly socks. When they started wearing more just like athletic socks. And I would just, that way I didn't have to match anything. And I threw all the socks in a bin. They were all white socks. I hated matching socks. And the kids would just go to the sock bin and just pull out their socks. We had a community sock bin box. T, I'm not a stalker. Come on. <laughs> I still do that, actually. <laughs> About every six months, I'll throw them all away and just buy all new ones. Yeah. Um, dog factory in Vermont. No, they said Poland. Oh, um, polar, polar. No, these are horse ones. Kent, Washington. These were made. Um, mismatched as in, oh no. These are made in Poland. These dog ones don't have a tag on them. Oh, it says dog days on it. Dog lays? Yeah. No, this is D. Dog days. Dog days. Okay. Rebecca is out. Beetle Gal comes in at 55. All right. For the socks. Beetle Gal. Lot number four. Oh, wait a minute. Portland is the city of roses. It's not Poland, honey. Oh, it says Portland on it. Oh, my yeah. gosh. You said Poland the first time, but the second pair you said Portland. So you got one right and one wrong. Hey, Jack. I'm sorry. I'm Marilyn, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm tired, honey. <laughs> I didn't realize it. I read it wrong. I also read dog lays instead of dog days. <laughs> right? I'm like, does this say dog lays? <laughs> no, I'm not drinking, you guys. <laughs> not yet. 
I'm no, I'm not. I'm drinking coffee, actually. Okay. Let me move this out of the way and get another piece of fabric. And then I'll try to do some photos. And I do have a craft lot here that I was thinking about doing. Let's see. Let's do... You guys want to do one pieces at a time or you want to do a lot? Because I'd like to do this as a lot, to be honest with you. This is yeah. this is Jersey. Let's do a bunch. Let's do a bunch? Yeah. Okay, this is red ribbed Jersey. It's ribbed on both sides. You see it? Yeah. And, it's, and it's stretchy. It's start at five bucks, though. Huh? We're going to start at five bucks. You can know, start it at 30. No, all right. Did you already start it at five? Don't matter. That's all right. This one, that's fine. This one is green. It's again like a ribbed jersey. That looks like a sweater. Yeah. This one is blue. Same thing, like a ribbed jersey. Was it four-way stretch? It stretches, yeah. This is like, uh, it's like t-shirt. Oh, it looks like there's a little bit of staining down here. Hold on. Is that green ribbed on both sides? Yeah. Oh, the green? Yes, on both sides. This has got a little bit of yellowing right here, you guys. See it right here? It's probably where it was stored away. And there's a yellowing on the fold mark. I mean, it's probably just on that one outside piece. But this is a huge piece of, um, it's like sweatshirt material. Not sweatshirt material, t-shirt. T-shirt material. And it's, it's stretchy. You see it? It's like heathered, like a t-shirt. It's like a t-shirt material, like a cotton heathered t-shirt material. All right, so there's that. That piece and that piece and that piece. And I'm trying to do all kind of like Jersey ones. Here's another Jersey in yellow. Nice big piece. I mean, you could make scarves out of this too. And it's the kind of jersey where, see, you don't even have to finish the edge. You just cut it. And you could probably knot it together like you do fleece. No, Mary, Mary, I was saying, which one did you want to know about on the stretch? Which color? The green or the red? They're all stretch. Uh, does it stretch both directions, all four directions? I yes. Think was the question, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, this one is lightweight t-shirt material. This one, this one, this one, and this one are thick. They're thicker. And this one is thicker, too. There's a green. And it's also ribbed, isn't it? A little bit. That this is all stretch fabric that I'm showing. I'm pulling all my stretch. Here is a heavier, it's gray. It's a gray fabric, but it's a small piece, and that's stretch. And this is also stretch. This is brown. That's also a stretch piece. Um, let's see. I think that's all I can fit in one lot to ship. I'll have to do the rest of this stretch in another lot. Mary comes in at 30. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six good size pieces. And then these two are smaller pieces. 
And there's still quite a bit on them, but there's probably only a yard on these. These are probably at least three. Three. This one here is probably eight or nine. This gray one, I would say it's probably eight or nine yards. And these other ones are probably three or four. You got Mary at 30. There's no other interest. I need to get another bin for Mary. Rebecca comes in, would she power bit up to 38? Well, it's a little power bid. 50 would have been a good power bid. Or 75. Well, if it, well, if it gets to 50, I'll add the, the rest of what I have in stretch and ship it out in two orders. I'll, I'll sell it all. Mary's out. All right, Frank, thank you. Is it eight dollars a yard? I'm getting up there, isn't it? Wow, I can't believe it costs that much. I mean, I know it's expensive, but the colors are great. That red piece is a good size piece too. Wow, Mary. Mary knows her fabric. Okay, this is going to Rebecca Rader. For 38. All right. Sold, sold, sold. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Okay. Let's see. This is a huge piece. Let's see if there's a name on it. It says 1994 Mark Fabrics. 1994 Mark Fabrics is what it says. Are you doing another lot? No, this is going to be one piece because this is probably like nine yards. Um, it's inside out. It's, uh, it's, I think it's got a little bit of a stretch, but I would say it's more, no, it doesn't have a stretch. It's cotton. I would say it's cotton. And we're, and we're back to five? Yeah. And that's the pattern on it. And it's a huge, I'm a fabric hoarder. Mary, I was a ribbon hoarder for years. I loved ribbon, ribbon and lace. Marcus Brothers. Is that what it says? That's what you said, yeah. That's what I said. Did I say did I say Marcus? I thought I said 
Mark. It's okay. Mark. 1994 Mark Fabrics. She's saying maybe it's a Marcus. Hey, Sergeant. Five dollars. Oh, that's awesome, Rebecca. Any interest in this um big bundle? Yeah, it's vintage. It's really pretty. What's, uh, what's on the? Are they all flowers? Is that what that is? It's flowers. Purple or black? Purple. Purple, blue, and pink. All right, Rebecca's in for five. Frank, isn't that what you were doing out looking for Bo Peep? Look at look at auctions for you with the abbreviations. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see you. <laughs> I figured that out all by myself. I'm glad you did. I was struggling there for a second. <laughs> I did. I figured that out all by myself. Nice I, to I, see I was you. I figure out which letter she left out. <laughs> right. Well, first I first I looked at it and I was like, nasty. You're calling Rebecca nasty? And I'm like, no, 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 no. She's not saying nasty. She's saying nice to see you. Well, Phew. I was thinking antsy, but. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie, I was wondering if you were here, honey. You said nine yards about. I would say, you know what, I, I, I'll be honest with you guys. The other night when I was like holding up the fabric and refolding it and counting how many yards were in each bolt, my shoulder's killing me from that. So I can't, I mean, just give or take, you guys, give or take nine yards. I'm just going to say it's, you know, it's give or take. All right. It could be seven, could be 12. I don't know. It's a lot. I'll show you how big it is. And I know it's kind of like a crazy way to be selling, but you see how many folds it has in it? And it's... Hi, Carl. Huh? Carl. <gasps> Carl! Oh, Carl, we miss you. We miss you in the chat. I'm sorry you've got so much going on. I hope you have a great week too, Carl. It's good to see you. Oh, James, I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. All right. We got Heather at 11. We need to hear from Valerie and Rebecca. And D, unless some some of them said out and I didn't see it. No, Valerie just came in at thirteen. All right, yeah. there you go, buddy. See you later. D's out. Thank you, D. Ooh, Heather's at 15. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Valerie. So this one, if you guys get it to 20, I'll include this one too. And this one, let's see, this has a receipt on it. Oh no, there's a whole bunch of stuff on it, not just the fabric. So this one, let me see if this one has a name on it. 
like the other one does because I know it's important to you fabric people. Didn't even know that there was such a thing or such a market. I said it to T like the day after the, when I had that one fabric, which I think I found another piece of it. I have to look, um, that vintage name on it. Okay, I don't see a name on this one. Let me look a little deeper. I just see the color codes on it. Yeah, I don't see a name on it, but it's very, very similar, and it's another very big piece, and that's what it looks like. And it's cotton. It's very old-fashioned, pretty, very sweet pattern. So, so you'll get both. You'll get both these huge chunks. Let me, see. Let me back it up a little bit so you can, like, get an idea of how big the chunks are. Let me just fix this. So, um, you know, here's, here's a pen. So you can see how big the, the, you know, it's hard for you to tell just how big these uh, piles are, but they're, they're big, they're big piles. And you get both. Valerie's out. Heather's at 25. Hi, John Jones. Good to see you. Yeah, Mary, at least, if not more. Yep. At least six yards each. Okay, Heather's going to get them a lot of fabric. All right, Heather B. Heather B gets the flowers. Well, that's why you guys keep coming back and back because you get nice deals, honey. You know what? It's fine. When I when I can share the wealth, you know I do. All right, Heather Blackwell. This is a lot of fabric. Trust me. I mean, it's probably like 14 pounds, 15 pounds. Oops. Frank, are you ready to show something? Yeah, I can. Mr. Stryker. I've got some Blu-rays. Anybody want to watch a movie? Yes. They all want to watch a movie. I'm putting you on. All right. I've got 15 Blu-ray movies. And the first four, one, two, the first four of them are brand new in the wrap still. Uh, start at 20. Stargate Atlantis. Fans choice. Hey, Greens Vintage. Hello, hello. Hope you're well. And Wuchi, the Demon Slayer. No, I don't, John. I do not need one of those, but thank you for suggesting it. It's very nice. Hey, you Stargate? That's a good one, Mary. I always enjoy Stargate. I've never seen this one, though. Wuchi, Demon Slayer. Brotherhood of Blades. I don't, I don't think I've seen this either. And Safe Haven. 
Who's in that? That is oh Josh McDaniel. Oh, Josh Duhamel. Okay, Julianne Hoff. I, I remember Julianne Hoff. She was on that Dancing with the Stars, didn't she? Julianne. All right. Oh, this looks like a British series. Copper, season one. In 1864, he was New York's finest. Two disc set. Yep. Two disc set. Or that one, or that one. <laughs> well, good, Mary. There's a bunch of them for you to see then. All right. And Mimi's at 20. Uh, here's a good one. From the Marvel Universe, Captain America, the first Avenger. First movie. Let's see. Oh, and it's got the uh, the code in it. I don't know if it's still valid or not, but if you do that whole streaming thing. Uh, Deception is Power, Paranoia, uh, Harrison Ford, Liam Hemsworth, Gary Oldman. Well, there's a couple of good people in that one. All right. We have Mimi at 20. Ah, uh, The Crow, Brandon Lee, his final movie. Ah, uh, this one was fun. Whip It, Be Your Own Hero, Ellen Page. That's a fun roller derby one. And it still has the... Uh, Electronic code, digital copy. Water for Elephants. I don't think I ever saw that one. Who is that? Christoph Waltz. Oh, Reese Witherspoon. Okay. And Robert Pattinson. I guess he's been popular. Blockbuster, yeah. Dauntless, The Battle of Midway, based on a true story. Judd Nelson and C. Thomas Howell. They're both pretty good actors. Who's typing for me? Well, I'm doing that, Mary. Which one, Mimi? Right. We have Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief, Blu-ray and DVD and digital copy. Let's see if the digital copy is in here. Yep, digital copy is still here. And it's a three disc. I guess one of them is the digital, though. So Blu-ray and DVD and that one. Oh, Water for Elephants. Yeah, I never saw that one. All right, Lindsay, if you have the time. I know you were busy earlier. Here, Dwayne Johnson in Rampage. I've seen that one. That's a big eight, too. Now, that's got the digital copy in it also. Looks like it's DVD and Blu-ray in that one. Please be kind of rewind. Yes, for sure. And I never watched this one. Change Up. Ryan Reynolds and Jason Bateman. This case is a little bit... It's not perfect. The other ones are really nice cases. It just has one disc. Uh, yeah, just it just has the Blu-ray. No, this is the DVD. It doesn't have the Blu-ray. It's supposed to have a Blu-ray, but there is no Blu-ray. And this one... Also has the code in it. It is a very Harold and Kumar Christmas. I guess that's a comedy. And it has the code on it. All right, so that is 15. Well, let's say 14 Blu-rays. This one Blu-ray was missing. Just had the DVD. Let me turn this way. Some good ones in there. And 
Jonah Rebecca at 22. I enjoyed Percy Jack Percy Jackson once I figured out what it was about. Dauntless, the Battle of Midway, based on a true story. And the, phone, the film where Brandon Lee was killed during the filming. Or he wasn't killed, he died from a bullet. Rebecca at 26. And Captain America. I don't remember Paranoia, but it's got some really good actors in that one. From a blank bullet, right, Bluegrass. It just hit in the right spot, or the wrong spot. Copper, I think that would probably be good if I had time to watch it. All right, is Rebecca the last, the only other person? Go ahead and call it down, Lindsay. Wuchi the Demon Slayer and Brotherhood of Blades. And Stargate Atlantis, Fan's Choice. I guess it's the best of Stargate, I would assume. I forgot about Brandon Lee. Yeah. Such a dark movie to start with, and that made it much darker. But it can't rain forever. So they say in the movie. All right. Thank you, Rebecca. I'll send you an invoice in the morning. Thank you, Lindsay. Blue rays. 26. Miss Donatella. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll do another lot if she's not here. I have a couple stacks of mystery paperbacks. And there are 31 of them. We can start at 20 again. What do you got there? Uh, mystery paperbacks. All right. There's some cat ones, cat mysteries, <laughs> cat spitting mad. Where's Elizabeth? She wants that. I know where Elizabeth's at. Uh, Ivanovich, four to score. Now, this is hilarious. Janet Ivanovich, all of hers are. They're terrific. But I think she's up to about 30 books by now. Gold Coast by Elmore Leonard. And these are all really nice condition. They don't look like and maybe one or two of them have been read. Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder by Joanne Fluke. You can see how nice they are. Robert Cray, Stalking the Angel. Looks like Mickey Mouse there, doesn't it? In the shadow. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay Ann, for helping. 
Uh, Gravestone by P.M. Carlson, a Marty Hopkins mystery. I don't know anything about him or her. I don't know which one it is, actually. Robert Cray, Free Fall. I've read him. They're pretty good. Oh, another cat mystery. Nancy Atherton, Aunt Dimitri, and the next of kin. Mary wants to know if they're from your personal collection. They're not my personal collection, but is I have a lot of mystery. Most of my mysteries are in hardcover these days because I, I just read them at home. So if I was taking them out of the house, I would take paperbacks. But Perry Mason in the case of the burning bequest. I know he, he's been become popular again once again lately. And another Perry Mason, the case of the moth-eaten mink. Here's another Joanne Fluke, Cherry Cheesecake Murder. All of hers are centered around uh, food. Food. <laughs> and I think she actually gives some, uh, yeah, she gives some recipes in all of her books. All right. Shirley Rosso Murphy, Cat Deck the Halls. She does a lot of cat mysteries. Robert Cray, The Monkey's Raincoat, one of his earlier ones. Oh, here's some cats. Cat Trick by Sophie Kelly. A Magical Cat's Mystery. Hmm. And here's an author from Florida, Tim Dorsey, Hammerhead Ranch Motel. And this one does look like it's been red. It's got a couple creases on the spine. And another life. <laughs> uh, Jan Burke, Bloodlines. No, Jill. I don't. I mean, Kelly novel. I don't read books. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Barnes, Flashpoint, a Carlotta Carlisle novel. Lori King, A Letter of Mary, a novel of suspense featuring Mary Russell and Sherlock Holmes. I know, in another life, I get it. <laughs> Kathy Reichs, Bones mm. Are Never. I didn't, and, Deborah. I, I'll look at it tomorrow. And Kathy Reichs is the one that I'll be uh, shipping wrote all day. Bones, the, the television series Bones, are based on her books. Kathy writes. Lillian Jackson Braun, the cat who talked turkey. She wrote a very long series with cat mysteries. This is a southwestern one, Red Moon by Robert Westbrook. What's that say? A Howard Moon deer mystery. Here's a real good author, Michael Connolly, The Black Echo. I believe that was made into a movie. Thank you, Lindsay. Deborah, when did you send it? I just looked at my email and I don't see it. Diane Mott Davidson, Catering to Nobody. She does a lot of uh, recipe uh, food mysteries as well. Stabbing Stephanie by Evan Marshall. Looks like another cat mystery. A cat under fire. Oh, those cats are always getting in trouble, aren't they? What'd you do? Pull all your cat books? No, they're just they're just a lot of cat mysteries these days. Uh, Ed McBain, King's Ransom. 87th Precinct Mystery. Um, Let's see. Okay. TJ Parker, Cold Pursuit. And the last four are the taller mass markets, so they're almost trade size. CJ Box, Vicious Circle. Mm, she's very popular. I can't see. 
is that? It, oh, yeah, Joe Pickett's who she writes with about Joe Pickett novel. Ah, uh, here's a good one. Michael Crichton, The Great Train Robbery. Yep, made a movie from that one. And the last two are by Stuart Woods. Stone Barrington novels. Naked Greed. I like Stuart Woods. I actually met him at a signing. He's from Florida as well, I believe. Fresh Disasters. Like I said, these are the taller taller ones, those last four. So we have D at 22. Remember, it's free shipping. All right. So there we go. That's all of them. 31 of them. 31 total. Oh, I see it, Deborah. I don't remember any cats being hurt in these mysteries. Deborah, I see your email. I'm going to make myself a note right now and, and uh, take care of it tomorrow. I found uh, it. B. Sue, are you out or in? We'll shut it down. If there's no one left. Hi, little gay. You want them, D? Well, you're the high bid. Hey, little K, welcome in. She says it's such an awesome collection. Uh, awesome condition. Yeah, oh, condition, yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, I can't read. But we're doing a book lot, Donna. Hmm? But we're doing a book lot. Hey, James. Welcome in. Yep. It's a big P. What's Pat talking about? It's a big P. What's Everybody's talking in code, including me tonight. Oh, <laughs> Susan swoops in at 24. Hello, Susan. Hi, Susan. Why do I have to write on the box to get him in your house? You're the winner. <laughs> Free giveaway. Free giveaway. I have no idea how many cat ones there are. There's a lot of them, though. But there's some good recipe ones, too. Food mysteries. And some Perry Mason. Food, food, food. But some of my favorites, Ivanovich. Start at the beginning, though, if you start reading Ivanovich. They're great. She said to mark it giveaway enclosed. Giveaway enclosed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about your free sample? <laughs> <laughs> D's comes in at 34. Oh, Pat always thinks he's being ignored. We see you, Pat. Hi, KK. KK. Hello, sweetheart. T's not with us tonight. She took the night off. She's in the chat, though. She's monitoring us. Make sure we don't do anything inappropriate. It's just me and Stryker. Find something, Pat. Some business books. How to sell more hot dogs. She sees you. All right, we've got D's at 34. 36 will be the next advance. Like I said, I haven't read many of the 
the food ones, but I know some people that really like the ones, especially the ones that give you recipes in them. Because I know one person that makes a lot of the recipes. <laughs> Says they're pretty good, actually. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, little Kay. I appreciate it. Oh, Wanda has 24 of them. Good. So I know sure. Wanda likes them. Cindy says, Shrekker's voice is soothing. I think you should read bedtime, bedtime stories every okay, night. So if I did that on my channel, how many people would come and listen to that at bedtime? Deborah, I saw it, honey. I found it. I don't know if you if you were not here. I saw it. You sent me a copy of the invoice. All right. So Wanda, do you really enjoy Ivanovich like I do? Now I haven't, oh, audiobooks. Eh, I've got some, I could bring a lot of audiobooks. I'm not big on them though. I'd much rather read books and listen to them. That's just me though. It's like reading a real book or the electronic version really no comp no contest for me i'd much rather read one than the on a real in real paper lindsay thank you so much for jumping in honey i really appreciate you oh yeah you can yeah certainly listen to alexa for sure you can use alexa to listen to audiobooks yeah if you buy them on amazon they'll oh. read them to you yeah, yeah, I, I lose I lose focus on audiobooks. I my mind wanders off somewhere else and Oh put me on audiobook. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. YouTube would be about as close as we get to that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, D's collection. Uh, I'll send you an invoice tomorrow. Or you can send me a PayPal if you like. I'll put my email. Anybody that won from me can send me a PayPal if they prefer right away and that way they can go out in the morning. There's my email. If you subscribe to Audible, yeah, for sure. Good morning, Anthony. Yep. All right. So while I'm here, tell me what kind of book lots you would like to see. That way I can bring what you want. Instead of trying to guess what everybody wants. I probably have some of everything as far as history, World War One, II, uh, Civil War. Vietnam's a little hard to get a whole lot of. And then oh, I do have one lot made up for later on <laughs> espionage, FBI stuff, autobiographies. I can certainly do autobiographies, true crime. I probably have enough for a lot of true crime. Oh, I might have a, a, some true crime ones. I don't yeah, know. I think it's crime. a series. Pop-up books, Dinosaurs, Abe Lincoln. Okay. You're going to part with your pop-up books? Yeah, you know, I've got some. Rom Do you want romance, Amy? Do Amy, you want how about uh, re religious romance? I've got a big lot sitting over here now. That kind I of defeats the purpose of romance, maybe. I don't know. Christian fiction. Agatha Christie. I can do Agatha Christie. She's really hot right now, too, I know. Business books. I can do business books. True crime again. Okay. Historical fiction. All right. I can do all of those. Okay. okay. All right. So, you guys, I'm going to show you this lot. This lot came from a different lot. But I am going to show you last night. I think it was last night. It's approximately three inches of postcards, $70. This is a mix of old and new. Some of them are textured, um, but this lot, if anybody's interested, I think I got two orders last night. If anybody's interested, I do have a big case of these, $70 for three inches of assorted postcards. Some are postmarked, some are not. 
Um, if anybody's interested in ordering these postcards, let me know. They're selling for $70 for three inches, okay? And you can just put the number 70 in the chat if you want me to send you a bundle of those. These are um, I think a little bit older. Uh, they came from a different collection. Um, a lot of them are European. Some of them are um, front and back. You can see, um, let me see if it says the year anywhere on here. I don't see the year anywhere on it. So some of them are front and back. So I'll, I'll show you. We'll start these at $30. Um, this place, it seems to be unrivaled. Unrival for those in need of change. And you will get them in these sleeves. These were from a collector. I'm sending you lots of love and kisses. She's a little scary, but that's okay. Um, this woman here, parents are made for men, not women. Women are made for men, not for pants. Holy cow, look at this. When a man's pants for women and women's pants for men, there's a pair of pants. Such pants don't last. Pants are like molasses. They're thinner in hot weather and thicker in cold. Men are often mistaken in pants. Such mistakes are breaches of promise. There has been much discussion whether pants is singular or plural. Men wear pants, it is plural, and when they don't, it is singular. Men go on a Wow, oh, this 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 postcard's very up. It gets difficult to read it clear at the bottom, doesn't it? It is, it is. Do you want to try to read it all the way to the bottom? I wanna see no. what it, I wanna see if it has a year on it. Nope. It doesn't. One cent and two cents though is probably uh the teens, nineteen teens. So divided back, so it's after nineteen oh seven. It's 1907? After 1907. It's probably in the teens, 1910 to 1915 area. Right. It is a mouthful. This is it's kind it's of embossed. crazy. Nice yeah. embossing on it. That would never. Um, yeah, there's embossing on it. Who wants to send that to Pelosi? <laughs> I'll listen to you. You're getting the way to go. I'm just curious what it says all the way. When the right team go, it's kind of very controversial, right? All right. Good night, D. Thank you for coming in. Mary. Good night, D. Okay. And then you have this kind of scary lady here. Let's see what she's. Yeah, a lot of them are judgment for sure, 1920s. But there's a few earlier ones there. Okay, and then there's this one here. How about a good back view? Mm. Interesting. Okay, so that's that one. All right, so this one peach cream it's cute this one is some of the peaches we have pearl a peach like you should pair with me that's very cute you ought to be with me in brattleboro take that oh. one out That'll, that should have a post 1906 on. yeah that's when it was manufactured See when it was posted. Judgmental care. Where have you been? The 
divided back 1907. 1907. Yeah. Green, Greenfield, Massachusetts. Nice so, condition. It's cute. Oops, I just dropped two of them. Let's see, we'll look at them since they're out. This one is marked 1912. That's this one here, fell out. And then this one is marked 1912 as well. That's the undivided back, though, so that came out much earlier than 1912. And stormy weather use the telephone. What does that mean? Yeah, bluegrass. I look at a lot of postcards. I list a lot of postcards. He does, Anthony. He knows a lot about a lot of things. I don't know about that. But That's why I know a little bit about a lot of things. <laughs> That's why you're such a good co-host, because you know so much about stuff, and you always chime in when I don't know about stuff. And not only helps me, it helps the it helps the chat as well. Say you are my Valentine, <laughs> or I'll sink the boat. All right. There's a threat. <laughs> and then there's this one. That's a real pretty one. The oh, receiver in the hand is worth two letters in the post. Oh, I'm sure the United States Postal Service didn't like that postcard going out and about. Let's see when that one was. 1908. Yeah, that's a tux also, so that's better. Boston, Mass. Ooh, Chestnut Street. That's uh, in the Back Bay. That's a very affluent, very affluent area of Boston. Okay, Deborah, but do you think people in, you know, 2099 is going to be reading what we wrote? And what about this one? I've oh, reached you, my Lindsay. destination at last. See, so you better listen to Lindsay. She knows what you know. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, Lindsay. I just said that. This is a very old postcard. What does it mean I've reached my destination? And what is on her legs? Well, and, and who is that in the window? Yeah, that looks like Jiminy Cricket or something. Doesn't it? I don't think he was around back then. But it does. It looks just like them. Yep. Yes, he probably didn't come out till the teens or twenties or something, did they? Why does she have designs on her legs? Well, I was going to say they may be uh, wings, but I'm, they don't really look that way. Happiness be yours on birthday. May your birthday be fragrant with many good wishes. I'm going to look at the inside of these. First I'll show the outside and then I'll, I'll see what's inside. This one's like afraid of who's behind the door. What kind of postcard is that? This is, oh my God. <laughs> what do you wander into? <laughs> what in the world is going on here? Well, she's trying to read a book, but I don't know what the other one's trying to do. Professor Leopold, okay. The German. Let's see if it says anything on the back side of it. John Jones. I know, right, John Jones. <laughs> Some of these postcards are very strange. Well, they're great, though. Nice pictures of the past. It's all embossed. I don't know. That looks like Greek, literally. Okay, so there's those. Let's look at these. Happy New Year. It's sweet. And that's very sweet also. This one says 1908.
These are the real deal, you guys, not reproductions. What in the world is going on here? Buried in the hay. Well, all of them are slightly risque, right? No. Well, some of them, yeah. Some of them are. I have some. I have some uh, risque ones. I'm going to have to do a, um, a rated, rated X live and only people that are not going to be offended by them can come to it. I'll do it when I know um, Bolo Buddies will be out of town. Mm. After dark version. 1906. Island Pond. Where's that? Island Pond. Connecticut, maybe? Philadelphia. Came from Pennsylvania, but it's going somewhere else. Copyright 1906. Okay. Is that? I really enjoy looking at these, you guys, so bear with me. Yeah, there's plenty of people doing that judgment. They scan thousands and thousands of them and put them on a CD and sell them that way. Firenze. 1909, this beautiful picture we saw today in the Petit, Petit Gallery. It is a beautiful building, exterior tables. Very cool here today. We like it very much. I went to Massachusetts. Can you imagine? 1909, you guys. That's an old postcard. I love handling old stuff. You do too, right, Shriker? Oh, yeah. I love it. What is a kiss? Nothing for a stranger to see. Dear, this place suits me all. I'm making rapid progress yours. P.S. Don't worry. A soul kiss will all the better feel when you get it and don't have to steal. Closing time, copyright, what's that say? 19, looks like 1916 maybe. And here's the backs of these. This one was from 1912 and me too, Mara. I wish I had lived in that period also. This one is, I can't see it. This one is 1912 also. All right. And next we have, are you game? Don't hurry if you want to see everything. Ocean Park, Maine. I'll try anything once, and if I like it, I'll try it again. When I was a baby, the ladies used to kiss little pink toes. They wouldn't do it now. 
Men should never run after a streetcar or a woman. There'll be another one along in a minute. Huh. The fact that men and women are always running after each other is what makes it the human race. These are a little bit strange. Let's see what the postmark is on these. <laughs> Let's see if there is a postmark on them. Uh, no postmark on those two. This one has a postmark. Of course you can, Wanda. No problems. 1916. There's about a million postcards on there right now. Nineteen sixteen on that one. And let's see if there's postmark on these. Yeah, Wanda, if you ever um, watch The Auction Professor, he actually made a lot of money selling just... Have you ever seen his videos? about his postcards Schreiker. i know i know i know don yeah he's made a lot of money selling postcards there's a lot of postcard collectors out there that love old postcards this one's 1908 i know quite a few postcard sellers and this one is I don't have enough listed yet to be considered a postcard seller, but someday. Can't read it. 19 something. It's old. And this is what we have. We have, uh, my name is Dorothy Dainty. I started the fashion of wearing Dorothy Dainty ribbons. <laughs> and are you a poly... Uh, Wanda, I mean, there's, yeah, there's a lot of nudity on, on there in the postcard, uh, category. So it's generally not a problem as long as it's not, you know, sexual in nature. If it's just mostly art, there's, there's no problems. I know a few people say that they've had problems, but I've never had any problems with them. If you have not checked HIP postcard for selling postcards, take a look. Lower selling fees. Monthly store starts at two ninety nine. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for that information, Steve. Okay, so in this lot you get one, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 28. And most of the, the nudes that you see here anyway are just uh, photos of actual art hanging in galleries and things in museums. So. 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 43 postcards in this lot of all 1900s. All right, Heather MC's at 55. Anybody all want? early 1900s. All original. Maryland's at 60. All beautiful. Judgment, are you interested in continuing or be Sue? All right, thank you. Steve is out. Heather's at 65. Thank you, Steve, for bidding. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Marilyn.
All right, we're looking for 70. It's a beautiful collection. Wanda's at 70. I think I have to say this one's a little scary. I'm sending you lots of love and kisses. But yeah. I do love the postcards that have those color colors in them like that. All right, Marilyn and Heather, let us know. Looking for 75. Thank you for the advice, Steve. Maybe I'll have you on my show one day and you can show people how you actually do it. I bet people would love that. Would you be interested in doing that, Steve? Show people how you scan your photo, your postcards to list them. I think that would be an awesome show. You've been you've been on before. He says maybe. Will you reach out to me if that's something that you'd be interested in doing? I would definitely be interested in having you show everyone how you scan them and list them. This is kind of like what nightmares are made out of. <laughs> Sorry, Marilyn's out. Heather is out. Who's bidding? The, Wanda? Wanda's at 70. Wanda's at 70. All right, let's close it to Wanda. This is lot number seven. Wanda Pep, thank you, Wanda. Judgment, that's what I use as a double-sided scanner. Trust me, if I could clone myself, I would be listing every single one of these postcards. No. I would, just not enough hours in the day. Oh, I know. So what do you bring next? Okay. <clears throat> I have a small lot of um mysteries of the unknown i guess it's called and i think it was let's see mysteries of the envisions and prophecies um it's it's not um i don't i think i don't have the complete set and i know i don't have the complete set because i think i might have some more of these in the in the back room um but I put these in my bookcase because I you thought they were so cool. Hmm? 1111. Is that? Hi, Denali. Uh, you're doing several of these? Is that right? Yeah. I'm going to show you what I brought. Right. I'll just grab these off my bookshelf. And you're starting at? $30. All right. Ancient Wisdom and Secret Sex. Mysteries of the Unknown. Is that like witchcraft? No, that's the name of the series. They're time life books. Yeah. Hey, Harley. Thank you. Okay. Then there's. Serial killers. Ted Bundy, John Wayne Garcia, David. Blah, I can't read all their names. Son of Sam. That's a different series there. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, Harley. This one is called Mysterious Creatures. Yeah, they fit right up your alley there, Captain. This one is Time and Space. This one's called Transformations. And I had this one and with it, the Journal of Polygraph Science. Chapter one, the interrogations. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Reduce the seriousness of the crime. It's all typed, right? Does that look like typewriter? Is it somebody's report or? Avoid asking narrative seeking questions of suspects. Narrative seeking questions are asked of a witness and victims. What happened if you ask the suspect? So it's like, it's like a handbook on how to interrogate people. And look at, there's even some notes in it. Blame, pride, degrading, laughing. I guess it like what, dif what different people act like when you're interrogating them. Yeah, what it means. And what it means. Rules to follow. Getting a handwritten confession. All right, so that's the whole lot, you guys. So you get this Journal of Polygraph Science for interrogating people, Transformers, Time and Space, Mysterious Creatures, Serial Killers, Ancient Wisdom and Secret Sex, and Wisdom and Prophecies. Is there any interest in this book lot? One, two, three, four five, six books, and the journal. Debra's in for 30. I think this is the most interesting one of them all. This here. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, could, I could read that. tell a lot of personalities on, uh, you know, what's written, just what's written in that book. Yeah, I, I, I sub to a channel on YouTube that they uh, study people's uh, behaviors while they're giving interviews and things. Oh, really? They tell you exactly when they're lying and what they meant, you know, by a certain movement or anything. Oh, I'd like to watch that channel. You'll have to share that channel with me. Yeah, they, they do a lot of the politicians and things like that. <laughs> oh, do they? Yeah. You think the serial killer book is the best of them all, true crimes? Yeah, body language experts, yeah. Ozma! Hello, darling. Okay, Deborah Reed is in at 30. Is there anybody else or should we sell it to Deborah? We'll give it to Debra. Not recommended for nighttime reading. I, I've, I've talked about this channel that I watch sometimes at nighttime, which is not recommended for nighttime watching either, because sometimes I have nightmares, but um, I always have nightmares anyways. It doesn't matter. Um, anyways, it's called Absolute Oddities. 
Oh my gosh. I just, they, he just released uh, a new film like two or three days ago. And, um, it was, uh, it's about a famous actress, I think. So he like, he, it's awesome what he does. Knock, knock. What's, what's, uh, Steve saying knock, knock for? Knocking on your window after dark. Gonna scare you. All right, sold, sold, sold to Deborah Reed for $30. Steve, are you saying knock, knock because you wanted to come in tonight? I think I would do a whole, like, separate stream for that. If you were thinking about coming in. Is that why he's saying knock, knock? I'm not sure. No, no. Did you have another um lot you wanted to show? No, I'm I'm done. You're done? Oh, the serial killer that lives next door. Huh. Right. Okay, let's see. Eight, eight. Um, let's fill out this card in one minute. I am going to put these here for a second. And I'm going to do a little bit of a mix here. Let's do this. That is kind of like, um, to me, it looks like um, it's stretchy fabric. To me, it looks like a long john material. Yep. And here's another stretchy material. That's green. And are we doing a large lot? No, let's start it. Let's start it at twenty. This one is kind of like a kind of like a fleece. You know what it feels like? It feels like little kids' pajamas. You know, like little kids' nightgowns. That's what it feels like. Like thin, thin fleece or something. And this one is deep purple. probably should pick out some of these solids to do a nice background. This one is a cream. And let me see if there's any more stretch, stretchy stuff here. Stretchy, stretchy. This is a huge bowl to stretchy, so I'm going to probably do that separately. Um, Dwarves put the rest of the fabric out today, so this is everything I have left. Nope, here's another stretchy. This is uh, like a plum color, and it's stretchy. And here's another stretchy. This is green. And it's stretchy. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bundles there. $20 start. So these are smaller pieces, some of them are, so just one or two yards on yeah, them? Yeah, they're definitely smaller. They're probably two or three yards each. Um, Shriker, the books went to... Uh, Deborah Reed. Deborah Reed. For 20? Uh, 30. 30. Oh, I didn't write down. The, that was lot number. The books were eight. Eight. The postcards? Were seven for 70 to Wanda. Who bought them? Wanda Peck. Wanda, that's it. Thank you. And we have Amy in for 20. All right. 
Amy wants it for 20. All right, no other interest. Let's give it to Amy. Seven pieces. This one's very pretty. This shot true screen. All right, lot number nine, $20 fabric. Okay, Shriker, I'm going to bring you in. All right. Hi, Christina. Christina, hi, honey. Ready to call it a night? Sure. All I right. still have uh, hours worth of work to do, so that's fine. I know, with me. I know, and it's already eleven thirty here, ten thirty your time. Um, thank you everyone for coming in. I really appreciate it. I'll be getting my, a lot of my shipping done tomorrow, and I just want to thank everybody for coming in. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up on the way out the door, and I'm pretty sure that T and I are taking the day off tomorrow. I don't know. We'll decide during our morning meeting. <laughs> Um, Shrika, what are your plans tomorrow? Ship, 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 work, work, work. List, yeah. list, list. All right. Well, I'll be in touch with you, let you know what we end up doing. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Send me an email, you guys, if you're missing a shipment or missing an order or something. I'll be checking all my emails tomorrow. Um, I've got a lot of things packed up, so it should move pretty quickly because I told you earlier that D Dolores and I packed everything today. So it's just a question of figuring out the gift certificates because that takes so much time. Um, you know, doing the invoices, deducting them and printing the packing, um, the, the, the labels. So, all right. Send me an email, please, if you're missing anything. Don't let too much time go by um, because then I feel bad, you know, when you reach out and I, you haven't gotten something in a long time. So, all right, bye. Mwah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Good night.